Hello, look who's back. Uh, Happy New Year if you're watching this in 2013. If you did manage to catch it on the day I upload it, then hope you had a brilliant Christmas. I'm recording this video in that we are bit between Christmas and New Year. Um, I've got a few hours spare on a Sunday afternoon. And it's a subject that I wanted to talk about actually, um, as I thought this might help you. If you're playing old school games on a modern day TV and wondering why they look so bad. Now this started a few weeks ago actually, it was uh, just before Christmas. I had a friend from uh, my school days come and stay with me. My friend Neil, he came down for the weekend. Um, we'd gone out into town, had a few beers and stuff. Got back home around two o'clock in the morning and he spotted like, you know, all my old school consoles and my Amigas and everything that I've got in this room. And he said, oh, you know, why don't we have a few, uh, few old school games? So we sat down in here, a couple of glasses of Jack Daniels on the go and uh, booted up Lemmings, Cannon Fodder, a few of the old classics that we remember from when we were back at school. But one thing he said when we started playing Cannon Fodder, he had a bit of a laugh in his voice and he said, uh, you know what, I don't remember the graphics looking this bad. And that kind of struck me, I thought, you know, is it because I've kind of always had these machines around? I've never got rid of them and then look back in 20 years. Maybe it's that kind of thing, you know, when you see uh, a TV show from when you were a kid and you remember it being amazing and then you might catch an old episode of it on YouTube and you realise, actually, this is crap. How the hell did I, you know, enjoy this back in the day? But I actually found myself agreeing with him. And the reason is because your old school games do not look as they were designed to on modern on modern day displays so if you're using you know an old 16-bit uh, or 8-bit machine hooked up to an lcd or a plasma you're seeing a lot more of the artifacts that the old displays would have hidden now i've looked this up online and it turns out i'm not the only person that thinks this um, a lot of the kind of really hardcore retro gamers will always keep an old crt display around and uh, devote that to their old school consoles so uh i i'm happy to say i've joined the ranks uh, I was having a little route around the attic the other week and came across my old Philips uh, CM88332, I believe the uh, display model is. And I pulled that down out of the attic, set it up with my Amiga 600. And I, no lie, I was almost moved to tears when I saw how great the games looked again. I sat down, you know, I must have been playing all the old Amiga games again for about four or five hours the other night. Just really enjoying them a lot more than uh, I do when playing them on my LCD TV. As I agree with my friend, you know, they just don't really have the same authentic look and there is, it's a bit too sharp. Now the reasons for this um, is because if you get a modern, modern day LCD or a plasma, the panels in those are designed at a fixed resolution. So if you plug in something that's not working at the display's native resolution, it's got to upscale it. And with upscaling, you're going to see all the artifacts, you know, corners on um, pixels are going to look jaggy. They're a little bit too clear as well, so it kind of gives you that really sharp nasty look. With the CRT though, I mean the games were kind of designed with this technology in mind and the slight blurriness that you've got on the display will actually hide a lot of the artifacts of the, uh, the pixels and everything. So I will show you a little bit of a comparison um, and show you kind of the, the new look to my office and the latest addition to my Geek Den. All right, if you watch my videos regularly, you'll be uh, all too familiar with my display that I've got on my Amiga 1200. Um, I've shared this in several videos. Uh, my A1200 there set up with a Samsung SyncMaster, the uh, 22 inch display that is. Um, it's quite a nice panel actually though. We've got a variety of inputs on it, including on the side there's S video. Uh, we've got the composite in there as well with the audio left and right. Uh, on the back of it, we've got an RF jack. Uh, we've got HDMI there as well, SCART. A component for uh, HD there too. There's also DVI and VGA. I mean, pretty much you couldn't ask for any more connectors than that, really. Now, while it looks fine on the Amiga's workbench, um, if I'm to zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not too bad at all, actually. It looks quite sharp, but that's probably what you want when you're using an operating system or serious applications on it. Next to it, though, if we scroll along a little bit, I've got a new little table in the corner there with my Amiga 600 that is hooked up to that old Philips TV, that uh, Philips monitor that I was talking about. Now, I first got this display back in around 1993, I think it was. Uh, before that, I was using an old um, TV with the RF input, which was an absolute killer for my eyes. When I got this display though, you know, everything looked so much better. And the um, 88332 is generally considered among Amiga fans, you know, is probably the best gaming monitor to get. It's a little bit small by today's standards probably. I mean, it's only a 14 inch display. 
but you know, I was always quite happy with it for gaming. So um, it's going to be a little bit hard to show you exactly how it works because uh, of the refresh rate on it. I'm probably going to end up with um, stripy black lines on the display, but I'm going to try my best to give you a little bit of a comparison. I'm not sure how well it's going to come off on camera, but give me a moment and I'll, uh, I'll boot up a game on both displays so we can have a little look at the, uh, the differences between them. Now, I thought I'd show you Cannon Fodder, um, as that was a game that I was talking about, and kind of the game that really made me realise <laughs> that games didn't look all that great on an LCD, if we're talking about the old school games. Um, now, I'm hoping that this is going to come out all right and my camera's focus is not going to blur it too much. But there, if we look at that text there, for example, to me, the edges of the fonts look really uh, blocky on this display. And obviously, another problem that we've got with this uh, display is that it's... Uh, it is a widescreen as well, so everything is kind of been stretched horizontally too. Now, if we went a little bit closer, um, and you can see the, hoping you can make out the edges of the font set, they look really pixelated on this screen. Now, if we get into the game a bit more, and again, looking at this, um, the characters there, they you can see all the individual pixels on this display and the. Uh, the jagginess of the edge of these fonts up here really doesn't look that great. All right, now in the game itself, uh, I'll be honest, this looks absolutely horrendous because of the way that the, uh, the main characters in the game are actually a pretty similar color to the background. They're actually quite hard to make out and the game's quite hard to play. Like, you know, I can't even really make out that these are meant to be guys up here. Um, so yeah, just playing this game in particular is really not all that pleasant on a display like this. If you get a little closer you can make out the uh, the individual pixels on the players here. It really looks like a pixelated green mess. And for comparison's sake I'll show you the same game on the uh, Amiga 600 on this Philips display. Now uh, I apologize again if you're seeing some stripy black lines coming up and down the screen that is because of the refresh rate of uh, this monitor. It doesn't turn out too well on video cameras um, but you know it, in person it looks absolutely fantastic at the moment and because it's a 4-3 screen um, nothing's been stretched horizontally we're not having to fill the screen and make it you know forks a widescreen display uh, so we'll load up cannon fodder again and straight away I can probably notice the difference on this now I'm loading this off a WHD load I've got a stack of games on both the A600 and the Amiga 1200's hard disk. And straight away, even looking at that font there, you know, from the same viewing distance, it doesn't look anywhere near as pixelated. It's kind of almost um, anti-aliased, if you can call it that, you know, the edges of it look, look a lot smoother. And again, that pixel, I mean, when I viewed that on the LCD, all of the, the pixelatedness of the uh, photo was really, really stark and really sharp on the uh, Samsung display. But on here it looks absolutely fantastic and uh, obviously these were the displays that you know these kind of games were designed for. And on this screen here again, I mean before we looked at this and the, uh, the characters looked really really square and blocky before and all of this text up here looked horrible on the, uh, on the LCD. I mean I think it does affect some games more than others but this one in particular, I'd almost go as far to say I find it unplayable on, a, uh, on the LCD display. And here the characters actually, um, the lighting on the, the little green guy's helmets actually reflects a bit nicer on this. You can make out the enemies here as well. And everything looks a lot more rounded rather than being, you know, so sharp and, uh, and blocky. So, uh, yeah, I'd really say that <laughs> I am favouring this a lot more. So, uh, I've also got, if you look down, we've got a... Um, a Nintendo 64 in here as well. But I also hook up to this TV too, so it's you know not just the uh, Amigas and the 16-bit games that look better on this. I think any console that was kind of designed with this era in mind is uh, it's worthwhile having a CRT display around if you want to play these games in all their glory and have them look as you remember them. Because to me, comparing that to that, it's just worlds apart. This is how I remember Amiga games looking. And I enjoy playing them more on this display, despite the fact that I've got to have, you know, another table and a hulking great monitor on my uh, on my second desk. I think it is worth it though. And I can show you for comparison a uh, plasma display. If I take you into my living room, 
Um, I've got a 50 inch Samsung Plasma that is hooked up to my CD TV. So uh, yeah, I can play Amiga games in <laughs> any any room in the house just to annoy the girlfriend. And as we can see here on the uh, on the CD TV display, um, I will admit it does look slightly warmer than LCD, but I mean, I'm normally viewing this from a distance of about, you know, three meters away from the screen when I'm sitting on my couch. But if you do get a little bit near, you can see that there is still some quite harsh jagginess around the curves here on the CDTV logo and the, uh, the CD icon here. So the big question then, is it worth having one of these hulking big bastards on your desk if you're a fan of old school gaming? Uh, well, look, they're not pretty by today's standards. It takes up a lot of room. They are heavy as anything. Um, but I've got to say, uh, you know, as someone who was around in that era, playing the old games on this display is the way I remember them. And to me, a modern day LCD, while it's great for um, using the operating system and applications, for the games, it just doesn't look authentic enough to me. So uh, if you're a purist or you want to enjoy the old games as you remembered them, maybe it's been a while since you used a CRT. I know for me, um, probably the last time I tried this was about 11, 12 years ago. Uh, so I'd really forgotten just how warm and nice the games actually look on this. So if you've got one of these lying around in your attic or, I mean, these days people give away CRT displays, uh, you know, I'd say give it a go and see what you think of the difference. Chances are you probably won't be going back to your LCD for your uh, old school systems anytime soon. Thank you for watching. If you want to follow me on uh, Twitter and Google+, I'll post my links in the video description below. And please leave a comment.